Operating engineers use a lot of different solvents for a lot of different reasons. Everything from benzene to xylene, diesel fuel, gasoline, it's all considered solvents and used quite commonly on all job sites. It happens a lot that guys get very complacent with materials that they're working with, the solvents and, and other products. They become so complacent and so everyday that, that uh, they don't realize what can happen and what will happen, especially over the long term of, of using it. We've all worked with solvents. You know, we've had them on us, and we don't think anything of it. We have to educate the members. They don't understand that you don't see it. It's a hidden killer. Solvents may be used as cleaners, they may be used as fuel, such as gasoline or diesel fuel. They may be used in a process itself. They may also be found quite extensively on some of the hazardous waste sites where they have been dumped or stored for years. I remember when I first started the Opera Engineers, basically my first day that I went out there, I met uh, uh, heavy duty repairman, a giant hulk of a man, and he comes in and he shakes my hand and I look at his hands and I look at his fingers and they're, they're swollen, they're, they're cracked, they're full of grease and grime and he had sores on his arms. And one of the things I remember, I remember thinking, is this the way that I'm going to end up being? Exposure to solvents is typically through inhalation or by contact with the skin. Solvents vaporize very rapidly in most cases and you can breathe in those vapors and cause problems, cause an exposure. They may also get on the skin. One example that I saw in the field was people using starting fluid to clean their hands. What's going on is it's taking that oil or defatting the skin and, and leaving your skin basically open for whatever infection can take us or whatever bacteria or whatever's in the air to come in and cause problems. The solvent can cause acute or immediate reactions such as skin irritation, uh, the vapors could cause an eye irritation, but it, they also may cause problems down the road or long term. I was the only Italian that started at the racetrack and I got a little dark, a little darker skin, a little olive oil on my skin as I like to call it. I didn't understand what it was about, but my hands didn't turn well when I did the parts cleaning. So I was driving the car, I guess about six months after I started at the racetrack, and I go numb from here to here. And I'm like, okay, I'm under a lot of stress, you know, things going on, I'm working, I'm teaching, I'm doing a lot of different things. All right, I won't think anything of it. And one off about a month, I go to the doctor, and the doctor says, Ralph, you're fat. I said, okay, I'm fat. So I lose weight, so I lose 10 pounds, numbness don't go away. I go back and he says, Ralph, you're still fat, 10 pounds ain't gonna do it. So I lose 10 more pounds, and numbness went away. So I didn't think anything of it, you know. But we stopped cleaning. We only do cleaning from like November till March. And then we stopped the cleaning and we start again in October, November again the following year. Well, the following year around Christmas time, same thing again. I'm numb. What it was is, as I stood in this class two years later, look up the board, trichlorothane causes severe central nervous system damage. I wasn't turning white, it wasn't defatting my skin, but it was causing nervous system damage. The main health hazard of solvents is that they affect central nervous system. They are actually a central nervous system depressant. You may see someone who's been exposed to solvents walking, talking, and acting like they're drunk. Some solvents have particular body systems that they attack. Examples of that would be the leukemia, which may be a result of exposure to benzene. It attacks the bone marrow. Or a rare form of liver cancer related to exposure to carbon tetrachloride. My father died of liver cancer. Benzene is directly related to liver cancer. He was a roofer. I mean, when I was eight and nine years old, we worked up on the roof. You go to lunch, what'd you clean with? Well, if he had a good week, you cleaned with benzene. If he'd have a good week, you cleaned with a gallon of gasoline. I mean, you look back and then say, holy crazy. But he died at 63 years old. OSHA has had a program in place now for several years, or for quite a few years, in fact, uh, called the HASCOM program, where employers are required to hazards to the employees. They're also supposed to have labeled products in the workplace. They're supposed to make sure they're labeled properly, labels aren't removed. 
They are also supposed to have material safety data sheets on all the hazardous chemicals that are used on that particular work job. These have to be available to employees. There really is no excuse for somebody not taking a couple minutes looking at an MSDS and finding out information. One of the things that uh, I stress most with people that are working with solvents or working with chemicals is to take a step backwards, look at an MSDS, find out about the particular chemical that you're working with. If there is an inhalation hazard present, is the ventilation around the area that you're working, is it sufficient or do I need to wear a respirator? We used to put feed water chemicals into a boiler, into cooling towels, and you used to have to carry them down a flight of stairs. Well, they, they were acids. Well, I spilt it one day on my foot, walking down the stairs, and didn't think anything of it. Was sitting up in the office, and all of a sudden, my eyes, I can't see. And I said to the engineer, is it foggy in here? Is something wrong? And he said, no. I said, man, my eyes are burning. Let me go try to wash them. So I went to try to wash them, and as I got off the chair and on my foot, I couldn't put any weight on my foot. We cut the shoe off my foot. I had burnt my foot. It had gone through the system, and it was affecting my eyes. When you looked at the data sheet and you looked at the labels, wear rubber gloves, wear aprons, wear boots. We didn't wear anything. Yeah, it burnt my foot because it was an acid. But what else did it do? What else did it do to my insides? They need to wear the proper protection when working with solvents. This may include gloves, aprons, splash suits, goggles, face shields, and not only wearing them, but making sure that the ones they are using are rated properly to protect against that particular solvent. Minimize contact, get it off you when you get it on. If your clothes become saturated or you get it on your clothing, get it off, get it off, clean up. Every once in a while you run across somebody who, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, has a macho attitude that, that uh, they're tougher than somebody else and that they don't need a respirator or they don't need to wear gloves, but th the hazards are real. Uh, we've seen over the past people having problems with uh, their respiratory system because they did this, because they're having acute problems, they're having chronic problems and issues uh, because they didn't wear the, the personal protective equipment. From safety glasses to gloves to aprons to respirators to hard hats uh, to earplugs, it, it, doesn't make us, it doesn't make sense not to wear them. Nowadays we, we know what happens when you don't wear them. This is my life and I'm going to protect myself. Why stick my hands into a bucket or something that the data sheet is 50 feet away and that's all I need is a pair of gloves. And I think the members, through the education that we've been able to provide in the last 10 years, is getting it. And it's nice to see them get it because they're going to be able to live longer lives. I believe chemicals are made to be used, but learn about them, know how to use them, and use them safely. My father, there was other things he could have took the tar off with. He didn't know, you know? And it was too late when he knew.